So in the previous video, we tried to break up the uh, Klein-Gordon equation so that we could have essentially <clears throat> uh, the square root of the equation, which we then square and we get the Klein-Gordon equation. So it's something like <clears throat> this, uh, And we notice that, um, well, d mu uh, and d mu, right, one is, has <clears throat> upper components, the other one has lower components, they're not quite the same. So that's one issue, I mean, that <clears throat> uh, sort of uh, works against cancellation, but perhaps more importantly, um, we can see that this object, right, has four components, right? This has four uh, uh, indices, <coughs> sorry, four components. Uh, the index goes from zero to three, uh, w while we can say that uh, the other term in the same equation, right? So this applies to this, and this applies to that. This doesn't. Um, well, m by has one, so they're not on the same footing, uh, and that uh, sort of suggests a uh, quick fix because to go from this kind of a thing to to something that has only one component, we do a generalized dot product, right? So we we're led naturally. <coughs> to contemplate, and let's use the notation that's used, some object with four components with, <clears throat> uh, I don't know if I'm thinking of that one, then it's uh, a lowered component like that, and this will give us uh, gamma zero, uh, d by d zero, right, d by dt, if that's time, plus uh, first component of this object with four components, times d by d, d1, which that could be, you know, an x, d by dx, uh, gamma 2, this could be d by dy, plus gamma 3, d by dz, or third component, <coughs> third spatial component. Um, so we try to build something like that, uh, and then so we we're led to considering uh, gamma mu, d mu, Minus n. Of course, we're going to multiply these two things, and we want to get the Klein-Gordon equation. Because uh, if that's not what we get, then it's all pointless. Um, d mu uh, d mu uh, minus m psi. This has to be equal to zero. Um, we kind of want the same thing, right? So I see uh, upper and lower, <clears throat> so it sort of flipped these two, right? <clears throat> we used um, the metric tensor to raise this index and to lower this one, so it's uh, the metric tensor uh, with upper indices and the metric tensor with lower ind indices here, so we just get um, gamma mu uh, d mu equals gamma mu d mu, <clears throat> and so we are led to minus i gamma mu d mu minus m uh, i gamma mu d mu minus m psi, that's equal to zero. Okay, so we built this object, and so th these two things will get us uh, this kind of a thing. But then we multiply by each other. Uh, we have to multiply them, right? So this times this term will bring in cross terms. We will have, we will have terms like uh, gamma zero, ga uh, sorry. We will have terms like gamma zero d mu, uh, d, d zero, 
uh, gamma 1 d by d1, d by dx1, plus uh, gamma 1 d by dx1, gamma 0 d by dx0. <coughs> um, so we have gamma 0, gamma 1, gamma 1, gamma 0. So we can write this as, let's... Um, Pull up the gammas, gamma zero, gamma one, plus gamma one, gamma zero. <coughs> that leaves um, d by d zero, d by d one, plus d by d one, d by d zero. Um, right, regardless of uh, space and time commuting, right, we could just write a factor of two there. Um, the issue is these kinds of objects that allow us to write the equation in this way, uh, we want these things to disappear. So, and of course we'll have uh, zeros and, and twos, uh, so two here, uh, and so with all the permutations, of course, right? When you write this out uh, completely. Um, and so that basically means that this thing has to be zero. Uh, so we want this thing to be zero and so more generally, this means that um, this is written, what, what, how is the symbol here? Gamma mu, gamma nu, these are, um, that's the condition, right? They anti-commute. Um, and so these objects need to obey this rule. So let's sort of uh, conclude this section by um, so notice, this is the Dirac equation. So we're coming to the Dirac equation. It's this object here, right? So we have a meaningful uh, equation that does have the properties we're looking for, right? It's, it's one derivative on this solution. Uh, but we're led to these other objects that we ha that we need to explore. They they, they have this property, um, and maybe we can end by noticing that uh, here we have right, we have a a theory of physical objects that's really that, that emerges from mathematical ideas. So we're going from mathematics to physics, whereas. Um, in general relativity, for example, we, we went from physical principles, so we, we started with physics and we ended up with mathematics that obeys those physical principles. And so we're building theory here in a different way, at least from, from a certain point, because ultimately in this uh, um, theoretical framework, we have uh, special relativity, which, which involves going from physics to mathematics. So we're sort of looking at theories uh, starting from different points, and then we want to bring these things together. And it might not surprise us that because they're built from very different places, from sort of opposite ends, they might not fit so well. So I'm sort of leave a question mark there. <clears throat>